and protect him and train him and teach him and do those things. That's part of the job. He signed up for that. And so I think what Jesus is talking about here is like, okay, you've got all of these things that are supposed to be part of your character and just automatic. You're supposed to do those. And it doesn't mean they're easy. I'm not saying that at all. But it's like, that's the low bar. And God's saying, yeah, now here's the high bar, the hard stuff. Me loving Tyson, my neighbor, even though he trashes his house. And so to do things for someone else that's never going to be able to repay me, and I should never expect it, that's, that's what God's going to ask me about. There's nothing in it for me, really. It's like, Ed, if you love Tyson. Huh. I think that's going to be on the script. I think that's the question he's going to ask me. It's not funny. <laughs> that's, that's why this is so hard for me. And there's going to be other people. I don't even know their names right now, probably. And God's going to say, Ed, what about this guy and this lady and this kid? And I've got my whole answers ready because I did all this stuff and it's just not the same list. He summed it all up in a real easy little thing called the golden rule. I mean, he really condensed it all. Matthew 7, 12 through 14. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. That was a little quick. <laughs> For this is the law and the prophets. Enter ye into the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and there, and many there be which go in. That is weird. Um, it was really the, the, that's the, those are the verses that I wanted to. And we've heard this, and I use different versions, but basically it treat people the way you want to be treated. And when Jesus said that, he summed up what he called the law and the prophets. Basically, everything in the Bible can be summed up this way. If you would want somebody to do that to you, you should be doing that for them. What I find in that text, especially if you look at it in um, a different version, is it's full of action. Just like the go and make disciples teach, baptize, those are all action words. And in this golden rule, Jesus is saying do, do, do stuff. It's not just a state of mind of, oh, I love everybody, I'm all warm and fuzzy. It's actually taking action to do something about it. I, um, I serve on some boards and on some of the past that I don't serve on any longer. And I enjoy doing that. It's, it's fun to plan things, make plans, um, make decisions and implement new programs and things like that, especially when it's dealing with things that are going to help people. Um, maybe people that are hungry or people that don't have good medical service or people that need better education or something like that. And I love to get involved in stuff like that. But I don't get my hands dirty when I sit on the board. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not doing this stuff. And Cindy and I, um, I was feeling that way, and I had an opportunity, and we were mentors for a year. And worked with a couple little boys. Did you have boys too, didn't you? Yeah. And um, just helping them to read better and, and get excited about math which I enjoy, and so it was like, cool, that's fun, I like doing that, and we'd play little math games and stuff like that. But I felt like I was actually doing something that was impacting somebody's life. Two weeks ago, I feel like I've been gone for a long time, but I've only been away for two weeks, but two weeks ago I um, helped a group of about 65 high school students on a spring break project. They, had a, they, they chose to donate some of their spring break time to actually help somebody else rather than go to Disneyland or to the beach or whatever their family was planning to do. And um, so I volunteered to do that. I didn't know exactly what I was signing up for, um, but I said, yeah, I'll help out. And then I got an 
email in, in, the, in my mailbox and it said that I was going to be an adult expert. <laughs> and I thought, okay, um, but what am I going to be doing? And then I found out that I was going to be building a sand volleyball court. Now, in all my years of accounting experience, I can honestly say I have <laughs> never built a sand volleyball court. And so I did some quick research, and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, this is a big deal. Um, but I was fortunate that the, the Parks Department at the City of Meridian, or CUNA, had gone out and done all the prep work, so that was all done. So when I got out there the first day, I had my first rotation of high school students come through, and uh, I told them, I said, what we need to do is we need to move 100 yards of sand. That's multiple dump trucks full of sand that they dumped into this court area. And we need to level it out and we need to move it around and we need to do a few things right along the edges where some wood boundaries were on both sides of that so that this thing all worked out good. And um, so I said, here's what we need to do, here's how we need to do it, and here's shovels and here's rakes and here's a couple of wheelbarrows and let's get started. And, and I was supposed to be supervising that, but you know, these kids, they were all excited and they first thing in the morning is their first job and they were going to be there for two hours and and there was an extra shovel and I couldn't not help. You know what I mean? When people are excited about doing something, you want to just get involved. And so I was shoveling sand and, and we were having fun and they were struggling with the wheelbarrow because some of them weren't all that big. And so I started handling the wheelbarrow because it was pretty heavy when it was full of sand. And um, the two guys from the park service, Bob and Bobby, they came back to check on us, see if we needed any more tools, and, and um, they started teasing me a little bit, saying, Ed, you're supposed to be supervising, you're going to kill yourself out here. It was a hot day, it was that Friday that was kind of warm that day, it was like in the 70s, and this, it did start to warm up. Well, my next group, I said, I'll, I'll take a rest later. Um, so two hours later, I got a new group of kids, and they were all full of energy because they'd been painting something, and so they hadn't really been doing anything physical. <laughs> So they started shoveling, and I could not shovel some more. So I'm shoveling and hauling the sand in the wheelbarrow. I'm just having a good time. We were having fun. We were talking about school and, you know, what this project meant to them and what they were going to do in college. And we were just having a good time and chatting. And lunchtime, and then the next group came, and these guys, Bob and Bobby, come back, and they said, man, you need to take a rest. You need to take a nap or something like that. Like, yeah. And then the 